Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and this is... Pat McDonald. And we're ready to begin our playthrough of Nurishima Hex. If you'd like to learn how to play the game, I'll put a link to the instructional video in the description of this video. Pep, we're all set to go here, right? Yes, I am the Molox and you are the Borgo. <laughs> right. Why did we choose these teams? Was it because we just love their abilities and... No. <laughs> no, no, it was just 100% what color they were. Yes, <laughs> you went with red, I went with blue. We might not play well, but our fashion sense is... Impeccable. Is impeccable, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the player who owns the game gets to start. I'll have to place my base on the board, so let's go to the table and find out what I do. So my base, I'm sticking down in the corner over here, and it gives plus one initiative to all friendly adjacent units. I'm going to play a bit aggressive, and I'm going to place my base very close to yours. It provides plus one to ranged attack strength for all adjacent units. That is aggressive because now you could put a unit here and here and it would be in line to hit my base as well as over here and benefiting from your base's effect. Since I'm going first, I'm going to be drawing one tile. I also want to remind you we're playing according to third edition rules. So if you've played some of the earlier editions, again, you might want to check out the instructional video to learn some of the differences. Well, this is one of my favorite units actually, but I'm getting it a little sooner than I probably would have preferred. I am going to put this one, mm, I'm going to put it here. It's going to give it a plus one to its initiative, so it's actually a two. It has a melee strength of three, and it also has a net facing in this direction. So I'm going to net Pep's base, effectively shutting it down. Well, I get to draw two. Oh, and look at this. <laughs> More nets. More nets. Oh, no. Well, uh, what are you going to do with your nets? Well, you know, I don't think I can resist netting your net. <laughs> well, so this is interesting. Oh, you're netting my net and my base. And your base. This is interesting because once you net a unit that is providing a net, <laughs> this unit's shut down, so I'm no longer netting your base. Yeah, so I'm netting your netter so he can't net my net. Right, very clear, very clear. Very clear. Okay, so you have another unit. What are you going to do with that? Uh, I'm just going to pop him here so he's in range of your base and he's got a couple of shots on other directions too. Oh, okay. This unit has a toughness symbol and that means that it can take one additional damage before it's destroyed. So for my turn, I'm now drawing three tiles. And that means I'm going to have to first discard one of these, and then I can play, discard, or hang on to the other ones. In a two-player game, from this point on, Pep and I will both now be drawing up to three tiles each turn. Well, this is mildly frustrating, because I would love to use this grenade to blow up the net here, but the grenade specifically says you cannot use it if your headquarters is netted. Thanks, Pep. Ho-ha! You have made the decision easy for me, though. I'm just going to discard this. And let's kick things off with a bang. Let's get a battle going. I'm going to place... This unit, ah, uh, here, yes. It's attacking with melee on both of these sides. And now I'm gonna initiate a battle. So we resolve the battle starting with the units with the highest initiative currently in play, and that would be the mutant here with an initiative level of two. So it's gonna do one damage to this unit and one damage here. That one goes away and we'll put a wound marker on this one. The best thing about this for me is it removes both of those nets. Uh. And <laughs> that means that this guy puts his net back on your HQ, Pep. And as we go down to initiative level one, Pep's protector is going to attack, which is going to kill my mutant and also hit my base for one damage. But here's where things get a little crazy because my net fighter, which is now unleashed, is getting a plus one initiative bonus, making it initiative level two, which is already passed and that means I can't trigger this attack right now. So that kind of stinks for me. Now we go to initiative level zero, which are the headquarters. This one has nothing to attack. This one could attack my net fighter, but the headquarters is netted, so it can't. That ends the battle. And that means I'm winning. Yes, one damage was done to my base, and now it's back over to Pep's turn. I wish I'd considered the timing of that net fighter a little better before I started that battle, but I still think it was a pretty good option. I have drawn my three tiles. And you'll have to start by discarding one of them. Boop. Wow, you got rid of the big shield. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay, I'm okay with this. What are you gonna do with the remaining two? So first I'm gonna take my hunter killer and creep him on up in between your troops here. Oh, you're getting all up in my business. And he attacks on several sides too, and has an initiative of three. 
And then I'm going to take this range booster. It's going to give plus one to the ranged attack on adjacent units, uh, or units in that particular direction. And right. I'm going to place it here. My next three tiles are, let's see, this is the assassin, and I have another battle, and I have a move. I'm not sure I want to initiate a battle just yet, but actually, you know what? I think a battle could work in my favor if I position this right. So I'm gonna throw out the move, then place the assassin right here. It's getting an initiative boost, so it's actually initiative four. And that means when I trigger this battle, I'm gonna be able to clear this one away. Yes, so at initiative level four, this unit is gonna be defeated. And then we move to initiative level two, which is going to be the net fighter who's getting a boost here. So three damage is gonna be done to Pep's base. And then I will be dealing two damage to your base with my protector since he's boosted from this officer. Right, I shut down your ability to be boosted by the headquarters, but you got some support there. And that means we're tied up again, both with 17 life left on our headquarters. Back over to you, Pep. Let's take a look at the next three. Ah, looks like you've brought the Morlock's Practical Joker. Indeed, I have brought out my clown, and he will be joining the fray as I'll be throwing out this medic. All right, I'm putting the clown right in the middle of the action. The clown has an interesting ability. I believe it says that during its initiative phase, instead of doing its normal attack, it can just blow up, right? Yeah, and deal one damage to all surrounding units, including my own. Right. So I won't be doing that. No? Are you going to initiate a battle? I am indeed. Okay. All right, so first up, we have initiative number four with your sniper. And that's going to do one damage, but you have armor, so it didn't blow up your clown, unfortunately. Joke's on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving on. Next up is initiative level three. There are none. Then initiative level two. Okay, my nets are going to attack this time, right? Yes, and at the same time, I'm going to destroy your net with my clown. And I'm doing one damage to your base. That's no laughing matter. Most importantly, with your net thrower gone, the net is gone with him. And now my protector is boosted to three attack. Oh yeah, that's right. It's attacking for one here, getting a boost here, and also getting a boost here. Kaboom! Three more damage to your base. I don't like the way this is going, but thankfully, my base gets to hit back and it will blow up this very unfunny clown. I didn't particularly care for the way things went there. I am suffering a little more damage on my base than Pep is, but now's my chance to rally back. And here's what I've drawn for this turn. With the move ability, I could use that to relocate my headquarters to somewhere else, perhaps taking it out of the line of fire. But both of these guys, I just feel they're just too good right now. So I will discard this move, and I'm gonna go somewhat defensive, but also it's still going to be offensive at the same time. I'm gonna place one of them here, and the other I will put right there. Which I think Pep has to be a little scary to you because both of these guys are initiative level three. However, sitting so close to Pep's headquarters means that in the next battle, they're gonna die. We'll see if it pays off. Pep, back over to you. All right, let's see what I got here. Oh, I'd really like to be able to use that mother module, but I don't really have many troops out. Is that this one here? Yeah. Are you thinking about getting rid of it? I have to. You do? I do. Okay. Well, what's your plan for the remaining two? So, my first plan is I am going to push. I am going to push this guy from my HQ. Right, and there's only one direction it can go in over here. So, it'll just slide into this position. We'll get rid of that. You have a unit remaining. And I shall be placing him right in the center. He's got a little bit of shielding, so that'll keep him safe. Just when I think I've set myself up, you find a way to wiggle your way back in. Okay, I'm revealing these three tiles, and look at that, I've drawn another battle. I've been using battles every time I've gotten them, but I don't have to. I'll have to see if it's worth it this time. I don't think I can resist doing another battle, but I'm gonna have to remove this really helpful module, which would otherwise give me an additional melee strength, and instead I'm going to use this guy. So, this one gets discarded. I'm gonna place this brawler into this position here, and start a battle. Okay, I see something on the board which is depressing me. Classic Rodney mistake that I'm sure all of you were yelling at your monitors when you saw me forget to move this unit because it has the move ability here. That means every one of my turns, I can move it one space and then rotate it in any direction, which would have gotten me out of the line of fire of this unit. But I've started the battle already, it's too late. <laughs> Let's see how this plays out. So this dumb unit here that isn't where it should be is actually attacking first as initiative of four it does a ranged attack, 
Unfortunately, the unit here has armor, and that blocks ranged attacks. My juggernaut is unstoppable. Apparently so, and it's gonna do a lot of damage in just a moment here. Now we can move on to initiative level three, and that's gonna be this unit here, which will do one damage to the juggernaut, because armor does not block melee attacks. So not completely unstoppable. I'm also doing one damage to Pep's base. At initiative level two, this unit is gonna trigger, which is gonna kill this unit, thankfully, which would have done a lot more damage to my base this turn. And this one will do two damage to Pep's base. Next up, I have my Juggernaut with one initiative, and he is boosted by my headquarters next to him. So he'll be dealing two damage to your base. And he'll deal two damage to your sniper. That's not my sniper, it's an assassin. To your assassin. <laughs> okay. Well, sniper, he's a sniper assassin. Whatever he is, he's dead. <laughs> And now our base is attack, and you kill both of these units, and thankfully I'm rid of your juggernaut. Pretty much the whole board just got cleared here. And here we are again, all tied up. Neck and neck. All right, on to my turn, draw my three tiles. Oh, I never get these movements when I can actually use them. Well, you can always move your headquarters away. Genius. <laughs> Did I help you there? You helped me more than you'll ever know. Well, all right, so if you're gonna use your move, then you're throwing out one of your units. Which one are you getting rid of? Say goodbye to the Armored Hunter. Tough choice. They were both good units. Time for me to do a little bit of movement. All right, so you're picking up, you're moving your headquarters. Where's it going? No, I lied. What? I'm moving this. Oh, you big sneak. Because I'm gonna sit this guy right in here, pointed straight at your base. <laughs> oh, very devious. Let's hope you don't draw combat again. You'll never guess what I drew. Another combat! Well, I've been mulling this one over for a little while here. It's, it's a bit challenging because I have the option of moving my base completely out of Pep's line of fire here, basically rendering his main attack lines ineffective. Sounds like there's a butt here. You're right, because I could also just move this guy over here, plug up this space with the new unit, and know that nothing on the board can currently hurt me, at least for now. Well, I have to make a decision here, and I think what I'm gonna do is not initiate a battle. I am gonna keep my base where it currently is and move this unit over, placing my assassin right here. It's a good old Mexican standoff we got going on. Yes, and I'm already full of regrets. I'm questioning what I've done already, but I've done it, so let's move on and see what happens. What did you draw? All right, here's what I've drawn. But I think it's time we call upon the help of the viewers and see what they think I should do. Pep, I think you've left people with a pretty interesting choice here because you have a couple of strong units and the option to start a battle. I do. But first, they have to decide which one of these things they're gonna throw out and then how to resolve the other two. Normally I'm a little worried that they're gonna pick a certain tactic, yes. uh, but this time I have no opinion going into this. I'm, I'm open to whatever, whatever happens. They whatever they do is fine? Whatever they do. Wow. They could just tell me to put both men way over here on the other side of the, the field, <laughs> have them point their guns at each other. No, I don't agree, I think you'd be pretty annoyed by that. I would. <laughs> yes. Especially if it kept getting upvoted. It's like, yeah, do that, that's awesome. That's a perfect strategy. Let's do it, guys. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you one thing too we should mention. You don't have to use all of your hexes every time. Now we have been doing that, but if you're sitting there going, okay, we have to throw one of these out, then we'll place one, we'll save the other one for later. That's, that's perfectly allowable. Sometimes you do want to kind of see what the other player does next before you use a unit that you're not quite ready to use yet. If you have a suggestion for Pat, put it in the comments below if you like what someone suggests. Give them a thumbs up. If you don't like it, propose your own suggestion, and maybe that will get the most votes. Whichever one does, that's what we'll come back and do in the next episode. But until that next episode, thanks, thanks for watching. We're neck and neck. We're tied at 11 health each. I'm running out of saliva in my mouth. I can tell. <laughs> Put that in the comments. If you like what someone suggests, gives them a thumbs up. Gives them a thumbs up. Give them a thumbs, thumbs, thumbs up. up. <laughs> and then we'll talk about the game. All right, Zen. Yeah. This way, or I kind of want to go that way. This way, this time, I don't have any decisions, any thoughts. <laughs> I'm just, I'm free, man. I'm free I and can clear. Tell it. Your neck movements, everything. My neck, my hands. It is Whatever free. they want to do, anything, anything, you know? It's so casual. Shall we do that one over? Yay! <laughs> you don't have to use any of the tiles, technically. You always have to throw one out, but you can save the other ones for later. Do you, have a, 